Welcome back to Guild Wars 2. Today we're going to be finishing up Gendarin Fields. From where we left off last time, we just head straight into the water and in here, and there's a point of interest we need to get. Very simple, very straightforward. Easy to miss, actually, because it looks like it's underneath huge amounts of land, because it would be. Now heading this way is a direction where there's dynamic events and all sorts of things going on. But the thing you want to get first is this waypoint. Don't know why there's a waypoint in a pirate filled area, but there is. Easiest way to get this thing completed, this quest is to just kill all the pirates. There's enough of them around. And apparently two points of interest on this I this one little island, but I can't say why not. Just avoid the uh, champion captain. He's actually a bit hard to kill. But we're getting closer to getting this completed. We're now heading south to a little tiny human settlement. Or so we would if I had not missed a little Hylic village. Yes, the Hylic have a village in this area. I don't know why, but they do. It's a little bit of a swim, but not particularly annoying. Now, they have a waypoint here, and this will actually prove to be very useful later on, but that's for quite a ways yet in the future. There's the waypoint there, and then there's... Apparently, uncovering the map made me level up. I'm fine with that. But as we head further south, there is actually a point of interest in this little tiny tunnel. Right there. It does lead all the way out, but we don't need to go there. We've already gotten that point. So back to the waypoint we go, and I'm going to do something rather interesting. I got emailed about this. It's a new dungeon that's opened up for me, which I will have to cover some time. Apparently, when I hit this level, I'm apparently the appropriate level. Well, at least it's good to let me know. I'm actually very happy that they let me know. But now I have to get back on land, and there's really not a good point to do so. I mean, there is back towards the human village, but we're not going there. We are instead going here and heading south, and then we're going to be heading back towards the east. But that means we have to encounter the road, which means it's a bit of a small jog. If I had gotten the waypoint in the human village, this would have been easier, but it wouldn't have quite fit with what I was trying to do with the map. Also would have helped if I had gotten this waypoint, which I didn't. But with that out of the way, we have a little scout we have to talk to. It's beautiful out here, isn't it? So green and fertile, Apple Nook is a place of simple, hard-working folk who take their harvest from the sea and the soil. But I must urge caution. Pirates are thick as weeds out on the lake, 
and give the people no end of grief. So, we're heading towards Apple Nook. We have the place, the name of the settlement, and apparently they are farmers and fishermen. Very cool. The one thing you don't want to do is get distracted by things like the spider. I got distracted, quote unquote, in that I didn't quite trigger the quest, which does involve killing spiders. Unfortunately, we won't be actually seeing that due to dynamic events. Now, you probably noticed the road goes south there. I don't know what currently lies beyond that point. I'll be doing some exploration later, and if it's important or interesting, I will be there. But for now, Apple Nook is set on fire. And we have to kill a bunch of bandits to help stop the bandits from setting the place on fire, which didn't work so well. We do actually want them to to not capture the villagers. Which, if we fail this, I'm willing to bet we're going to have bad times in Apple Nook. But after you kill the bandits, you grab a bucket, put out the fire, the place looks normal, nothing actually burned, great. And there's a waypoint up here. Apple Nook has about three waypoints, apparently, around its general vicinity. No, I have no idea why. And bandits. They're always coming back for more. You think they'd learn after the first few times they got run off? You really would. You'd hope. You really would hope. But now I have to head back towards the south so I can continue east. Which is the direction we need to go in order to get one of two last north-south passes done. Seriously, there's only going to be about two more passes. We're that close to getting done with the map. Of course, look, if you were paying attention to the time, currently when I said that, you'll know that it takes about ten minutes a swipe. Now here I get a little distracted in... Uh, killing this bugger. It was a minor annoyance, even though I was able to solo the thing later, which was actually quite fun. If you've ever had to circle strafe something, circle strafing is actually very important when you're dealing with something like that. Now, this is one of the more interesting set pieces, I must admit. And that's an island that these drake use specifically for breeding, so it's known as... Well, by what it's used for. It's one of the more interesting set pieces in the map, and shows the amount of detail they went into when processing how these maps are laid out. Now we have to ha do something with this little estate over here, which is actually one of the more interesting, I would say, areas, but what we have to do here is apparently the bandits are always after this guy, or this guy's family. Well, we have to look at suspicious bushes with bandits pop out of. Now, the bandits aren't always there. As I'm gonna show here. Checking the bush. See the little moa? 
again, one of those creatures, one of those, uh, things. Now, what else we have to do is the servants, apparently, are suspicious. To prosper nowadays. You accuse them of being a pirate, they will vanish and reappear in bandit garb. Which this one, for some odd reason, didn't do until I went into this room. I have no idea why, but whatever. Not like bandits are particularly difficult to kill. Now, the other thing we can do, and this is somewhat important, is these traps in the house we have to kill or disrupt. They will spawn bandits, of course. And as I said, Moa's hiding the bushes. I don't know why Moa's like bushes, but apparently they do. I don't know why bandits like bushes either, but hey, I'm not judging them on that one. Now we have to continue north, and this is another one of those more interesting sections of the map. We're going to be heading towards the Vigil's home base. Yes, the Vigil has a home base. Now, if you remember, the Vigil is one of the three major groups that are not guilds. The Vigil, the Priory, and the Order of Whispers are, are groups of people who are trying to kill the dragons, each in their own particular way. The Vigil are the large-scale soldier army people. And this shows when we finally get to see their headquarters. I don't think, as of yet, we have not seen the Order of Whispers or the Priory's various locations, but... I'm sure we'll get to them in due time. As I was saying, the Vigil are the soldier peoples. Look. They've built a giant castle into the side of a mountain. These people are serious and take their jobs very, very seriously. Always happy to see customers. Just getting rid of some junk in my inventory. They even have a waypoint specifically donated, dedicated for the task of getting people here. We could go inside, but there's nothing important in there. Back at the farm, or the estate, we now are heading south to go north. I could have, and probably should have, from the vigil location, gone east and then south. But I decided to go south to north. I don't know why. It was one of those impulsive decisions of mine, I guess. But it will showcase the last, more interesting bits of what we are getting into. Gendarin Fields are where the Char and Norn locales combine with the other races. The Asar, Asura, Silvari, and Human races. Gendarin Fields is kind of a place where they all mix. And actually it shows more Norn from this point on than does Char. We'll get to Char later. But they're on the the Char are on the far east side of the map. It's ridiculous how far east they are in comparison to the other races. But considering what the Char are and how much hatred the humans have for them, it's kind of expected, I suppose. This is what the Norn homeland looks like, pretty much. Snowy, mountainous. They're Norse. Do you get the naming convention? Anyway, enough of that. 
We have to attack trolls and Etten, set the traps, get some food, return the food. Stay safe. To complete this quest. It's simple, straightforward, and in the Etten Cave, which was just south of the one we were just in, there's a point of interest we need to grab. And you can see the skill point just in front of us, but we'll cover that next time. That quest has been completed, simply enough. Etten are actually slightly easier to kill than trolls. Trolls have a tendency of stunning you, which is actually of great annoyance. But even here we have to head further south in order to get one waypoint. I don't know why this waypoint is all the way down here, but it is. I'm gonna guess it serves some purpose, but I'm not particularly keen on what that is. Now there's only about two more quests we have to complete, and this one is one of the more interesting ones, because we're going to encounter another minor race, similar to the Skrit in many ways. They're called the Dredge. And the Dredge are kind of a mining group of people. They're very interesting. They've got a very interesting aesthetic to them. Unfortunately, to complete this quest, we have to kill Dredge or find these little nodes of ore, dig them up, pick them up, hand them into the guy who we passed heading down here. You probably saw him and fill in some dredge holes. You can also smack them over the head with shovels, which is very, very fun. There's also a point of interest right here, at the edge of their domain, and they dig their tunnels into the mountains, much like the script, but they're a lot, they've got a lot less personality to them. It's rather unfortunate. Anyway, after handing in all that ore I got, which was actually not a lot, and killing a bunch of dredge, that quest is completed. Now we're taking this road north, because this will get us to this little outpost over here, which has a waypoint, which is what we really want. Now we have to head east to hit the last quest. And this is one of the more interesting ones. And why me being so overleveled is fun. You see that Colosseum thing off to the right? That's where we're headed. There's also supposedly group fights. So if you're going with a bunch of other people, you can do things. You can fight a lot of creatures at once. But we are alone currently, which means we are going to be fighting solo. I've left clips in of every creature type that we fight in the arena. You could stick to one particular type and some of them are more advantageous than others. Some of them are very hard to try in solo. Others are a little less hard. Also, after having looked at the map, that one area I said that had so headed south at Applenook goes to Lion's Arch. My bad. I retract my previous statements, which were quite stupid. Anyway, each one of these has three different levels, easy, normal, and hard. Me being me, I'm gonna go straight for hard, which is always a veteran creature. 
Not that any of these veterans will pr cause me particular problems. I thought I'd show them all off. Some are harder than others, and actually one of them I'm not actually sure I beat. I'm pretty sure the game just kicked me out of the arena after having taken half my health's worth of damage. But there's a pretty good diversity in here of enemies. Like I said, some harder than others. That guy almost killed me, which was quite an unusual event. Very few enemies have that kind of capabilities. But there's really not a lot to say in particular about these enemies. I think it's the raptor here that just gets away. I don't know why I was kicked out, but I was. And so it's unfortunate, but not a really unfor unfortunate thing. That moth didn't cause me any huge problems. Actually, one of the more interesting enemies is going to be coming up here eventually. The fact that it's a giant moa bird. I don't get that. It's a moa. It's not particularly hard. I mean, you've probably killed several moas up at till this point, so it's not particularly... they're not hard. They may cause vulnerability, but they're not hard. This guy was also not very hard. He looks hard, he looks big, he looks vicious. Not hard. What's more interesting about these enemies is that they can actually drop things. So you need to grab those things and get out as fast as possible. And now this last enemy. He is rather interesting. He's an elemental. A tar elemental. Yes, he's based off of a flammable substance of tar. Now here I get caught in a dynamic event, which is... We have a short time limit to kill as many things as possible. I kept this little bit in because it's what caused me to complete the quest. And then we're done with it. It was fun, but it wasn't particularly hard. I mean, there were three of us, for goodness sake. Now, I am missing a point of interest and a waypoint. They're both in this vicinity. You probably saw me check my map earlier. Now... There's not much to say about these, either of these. They're straightforward, simple, easy. And I'll see you guys next time when we tackle the skill challenges in Gendaran Fields. This is Stomping Llama. Signing out.